what is the truth and what is BS. <laughs> when it comes to getting healthy, fit and strong, there's so much information. Very few facts, lots of opinions, two sides to every story. And as I always share, it doesn't matter how thin you slice it, there's always two sides. So how do you know what's gonna work for you? And there's so many fashion trends, uh, things that are on social media, famous people, celebrities, sports stars. I did this and it worked for me. Well, here's a great question. What is a fact? What do we know is going to work? And what do we know may work for you, may not work for you, because it doesn't fit into your lifestyle, or you don't like the taste of it, or your body just doesn't react or respond to it? So there's some common sense things, some logical things, but the really cool part of the human body is the human body. Anatomy and physiology are fixed sciences, anatomy in particular. Nobody argues about how many bones, how many muscles, what energy systems or what, what body systems we have. And even physiology, that it is argued a little bit on how those systems work. There's some things that are just not argued. So I'll use, for example, if you get puffed, you will get fit. And it's not even the puffed, it's the, if you overload your body, it has to change. I'm gonna say that again. If you overload your body, if you put it under stress, if you challenge it, it has to change. The human body is designed to get better. It's designed to overcome stress. It's designed to overcome challenges. It's designed to survive. So if we're, we're given a challenge, the body says, well, if that happens to me again, I have to be better, I have to be stronger, I have to be fitter so that I can overcome that challenge next time so I can survive. And I always take it a step further. It's not just survive, it's thrive. And two parts to that, the survive part is to live and breathe and, and be able to move around. Uh, but the thrive part is to be able to procreate. The, the biology of the human body is we are designed to make more humans. Now, whether or not you're gonna have any children, uh, that's not the point. The pure biology is if, if the human race is to survive, it has to keep procreating. So as I always ask, if you feel uh, tired, lethargic, you've got no energy, you feel fat, you feel depressed, is it likely that you want that you want to procreate, that you want to have sex? And of course, the answer is probably no. I've got a headache, I don't feel like it. So the human body is designed, and that's the, the beautiful system called the hormonal system, the endocrine system, where every everything, every message inside your body that comes from all of the different glands in the endocrine system are designed for your body to thrive and survive. Now the really interesting thing is it seems that people take little bits and pieces of that and apply it to something. So I use for example, uh, it's really good to breathe deep and there's lots of people that talk about breathing methods and, and how to get oxygen into your body and obviously we have to have oxygen. And there's fast breathing, slow breathing, breathe in deep, breathe out deep, all sorts of different ways to breathe. But the purpose of that of course is to get oxygen into your body, to get circulation through your body and for your body to change. And, and a lot of the breathing people are talking about if you hold your breath or if you get into uh, fast breathing, then your body thinks it's under threat so you could live longer or you could burn more calories or all sorts of different reasons for breathing heavy. But if you go to the fundamentals without having to get into any kind of breathing method, if you get puffed, if you overload your muscles and bones, your, your heart and lungs, your respiratory and cardiovascular system, you'll breathe deep, you'll breathe fast, your body will feel like it's under threat and you will get fitter. You will, you will, your mind and your body will get fitter because you've had to overcome a challenge. The challenge of my heart's got to beat faster than normal so next time I need to be able to handle that better. Uh, very fashionable at the moment to have cold showers, cold baths, get in an ice bath, do something cold. So go into cold areas, jump into cold water, do cold stuff. And yes, when you get into cold water, you go, <gasps> and your breathing changes, and your metabolism changes, and your body pumps epinephrine and adrenaline because your hormonal system, your endocrine system, thinks that you could die because when, when we get too cold, we die. So the body has to change to overcome the cold. So we have an increase in blood flow, we have an increase in oxygen supply, or we need more oxygen, we breathe heavier, we breathe deeper, and our whole body goes into fight and flight, epinephrine, epinephrine adrenaline, cortisol, because we're cold. But I'm going to ask the question again, without having to have a cold shower, or without having to have a cold bath, or jump in a cold river, or, or dam, or lake, if you get really puffed, you get exactly the same hormonal response. 
Your hormones don't know whether you're breathing heavy, jumping in cold water, or doing high intense activity. If you put your body under challenge, under stress, your body has to change. Your body has to overcome that challenge. There's all sorts of different diets. One of the big diets at the moment, particularly for longevity, is don't eat very often and eat less. Because if your body's under threat uh, of starving, if your body's under threat of, uh, I don't know where my next meal's coming from, then your body has to change. It has to get better. It has to get used to not eating so much food. It has to get used to going without food for a very long time. And of course that makes sense. And there's a lot of people who are doing intermittent fasting or not eating, for, they're, they're skipping several meals throughout the day to put their body into that state. But again, really interesting, if you get really puffed, if you lift heavy, if you overload the hormonal system, it doesn't know whether you're starving or freezing or breathing heavy, it has to change. And obviously when you do high intense activity, your body says, next time you do that to me, I'm going to need energy for that. So I better speed up your metabolism. I better get you to uh, store more, more carbohydrate for that high intense activity and burn more fat when you're resting. That's called your respiratory quotient which changes when you do high intense activity. Now, if you take those, th and I'll just use those three because they're very trendy at the moment, very social media relevant, which is breathing methods, cold water, cold treatment, and intermittent fasting. And the longevity experts are talking about it, health and fitness experts are talking about it, weight loss people are talking about it. And they may work. They may work if you like getting in a cold shower and if you like not eating for long periods of time and if you've got time, if you think about <sighs> and all the different kinds of breathing methods that there are. But the beautiful thing is that if you get puffed, high intense activity for 10 seconds in the fight and flight system, you're overloading your endocrine system to its maximum effort. It can't work harder than that. So you produce epinephrine adrenaline cortisol, the, the fight and flight drugs, which is what the breathers and the starvers and the colders are trying to uh, get your body to do. When you sprint for 10 seconds doing anything, and remember that your muscles are blind and they can't count. So it doesn't matter whether you are punching a bag or skipping or running up a hill or running in soft sand or punching a bag or kicking, it doesn't matter as long as you get puffed, as long as you overload all of those systems, then you produce epinephrine, adrenaline, cortisol, and after you have recovered from your, I've overcome the threat, you then produce dopamine, serotonin, endorphins, pain-killing happy drugs, and brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is fertilizer for your brain. And the purpose for the fertilizer is that next time she does this to us, next time you put your body under threat, Next time you starve me, make me work hard, get cold, breathe heavy, I need to be better. But without having to use all the trendy methods that may or may not work for you, because I have to fit in with your lifestyle, the beautiful thing is that if you do high intense activity for 10 seconds, if you get really puffed, if you lift really heavy, then everything else comes with it. Everything works better. So you have a brain that works really effectively, so you become there's no chance of depression, anxiety, you feel happy, you feel satisfied, you feel rewarded because they're all the neurotransmitters inside your brain that make you feel like that. And you can do that without having to freeze or starve or, or breathe deep because all of that's happening, the hormonal system's responding the same way with to high intense activity as it would to all of those other things. Uh, you will have a body that uh, burns calories fast, burns food fast, has a fast metabolism because you increase your base metabolic rate when you put on muscle size, which comes from lifting heavy, overloading your muscles and bones, which means you need more calories to survive at rest. You burn more calories throughout the day because you're constantly spiking your metabolism to require more energy because obviously when you sprint hard and when you lift heavy, your body requires more energy. When you put your brain under pressure, you require more energy. And you just feel good. So you've got a fast-burning, uh, fat-burning, uh, calorie-burning body. Your base metabolic rate is faster. Your metabolic rate is faster. Your respiratory quotient prefers to burn fat because, and that's the be beautiful thing about being fit and strong, is that your body prefers to burn fat because it wants to save the half a kilo, and that's all we can store, half a kilo of stored carbohydrate, for the high-intense activity. So... I'm an exercise professional who's bombarded every day and I, and I have an international fitness business college. So I'm constantly bombarded with all of the latest trends, the fashion, the fads, the pills, the potions, the programs, the ideas. And they all have a thread of truth. Everything you slice has two sides. 
it may work, it may not. It may work for some people, it may not work for other people. And I'll ask that question again. Uh, if you do deep breathing, it will probably work. It'll make you feel better because uh, you're, you're getting more oxygen. You're, con you're conscious about your breathing. But what if you forget or what if you haven't got time? You don't stop breathing because you haven't got time to do a breathing program. If you don't like cold showers or cold baths or jumping into a cold lake, uh, it, it may work for your metabolism and create more brown fat and, and stop you from getting older quicker and, and the whole all of the stuff that they talk about with cold. But if you don't do it, it doesn't work. And if you don't like cold showers or cold baths, it won't work. If you don't like starving yourself, if you're fit and strong, your body doesn't need to starve itself because it'll tell you when you're hungry, it'll tell you to, to eat, it'll tell you when you're full so you'll stop eating. You, your hormonal system will look after you because it wants to procreate, it wants to thrive, not just survive. So the number one mechanism is to survive, don't die, and the next one is to feel really good so that you can procreate. And your hormonal system does all of that for you. And when you're healthy, fit and strong, when you're fit and strong, your hormonal system is one of the big systems inside your body that is also fit and strong. People often talk about my insulin doesn't work or my thyroid's broken or uh, I don't have a sex drive because my, my testosterone and estrogen and progesterone is all screwed up. The beautiful thing is that when you're fit and strong, your uh, the whole endocrine hormonal system is also fit and strong. So do we get a busted hormonal system and then get fat and depressed and feel terrible about ourselves and have a, a thyroid that doesn't work, an insulin that doesn't work? Is it possible that when you're not healthy, fit and strong, those things are broken so nothing works properly? So rather than trying to fix the thyroid, fix the insulin, fix the testosterone, fix the estrogen, progesterone, what about we get fit and strong? Really fit and really strong, and that's my very personal question. If you are your very fittest and your very strongest and the healthiest you can possibly be, is it possible that everything else will look after itself? Or I'll reverse the question. Before you try breathing methods, ice baths, st fasting uh, programs, and all the other stuff that's on social media and we're bombarded with every day to try this fad pill powder potion program, my question is, are you the fittest you can be? Are you the strongest you can be? And that, of course, brings the healthiest possible body. Fittest and strongest also means that you're looking after your joints so you don't get injured. You're looking after your hormonal system and your central nervous system so it doesn't over get overstressed, so you don't overtrain. So when it comes to uh, puffing and heavy lifting, obviously you need to have rest periods in between. Uh, a lot of people say to me, Rory, I go to the gym five days a week for two hours and I'm not getting any results. Of course not, because muscles require time to recover, regenerate, and supercompensate. You have to, you can't, you cannot get stronger if you haven't supercompensated, because that in itself means that you are stronger. So you break down muscle tissue, which is challenging your body. It now has to repair and recover, which is a challenge for the body. And your body then says, next time you do this to me, I need to be stronger. If you made me lift this much run away from this stress, do this high intense activity, next time I do it, I have to be better. So you get fitter and you get stronger, you get healthier, every system in your body, central nervous system, endocrine system, skeletal and muscular system, cardiovascular and respiratory system, digestive system, even your immune system. When you're fit and strong, your chances of getting sick are very, very rare. If you do pick up a germ bug or virus, you'll kill it really quickly, if, if or it doesn't affect you at all. And if you do have some horrible bad luck disease, and that's what I call them, because there are some diseases that just, they are, they are just there because they're there. If you're fit and strong, you can handle them so much better, you'll recover quickly and they're less likely to come back. So everything works together beautifully if you're fit and strong. There's lots of other different things you can do. And you could smoke and you could gamble and you could go shopping and you could take drugs, pharmaceutical, recreational. There's a whole heap of things that people do to try and feel good, try and lose weight, try and get into great shape, try and have a stack of energy. But ultimately, if you're really fit, the fittest you can possibly be, and if you're really strong, the strongest you can possibly be, and you are healthy, is it possible that everything else will look after itself? And could that be the truth, not BS? Because I like to tell the truth and I don't like BS. Love to tell the truth and I don't like BS. Live your life to the max without BS. <laughs> <laughs>